Conversions are the most important actions that you want your visitors to complete on your app or on your website. And it is absolutely necessary to track them if you want to analyze how your visitors and customers behave or if you are planning to optimize the experience. And I mean the app or the website. In this video, we will take a look at how to track conversions with Google Analytics 4. Make sure that you stick around till the end of this video because there are multiple options of how to achieve that. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, then consider subscribing. If you have ever worked with previous version of Google Analytics called Universal Analytics, you know that conversions were known as goals. In the latest version, which is GA4, this definition is no longer present. And just like in the majority of other tools, they are now called conversions. Simple as that. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are several options of how can you configure conversions and that depends on your data structure and what exactly are you trying to achieve. Some things are a bit unusual if we compare that to Universal Analytics, so you should watch this video carefully. Alright, so let's dive in. Conversion is an important event that you want your visitors to complete on your site or on your mobile app. For example, if a visitor lands on your site and makes a purchase, that is definitely a conversion because revenue is one of the primary goals that a business has. Purchase is an example of a macro conversion because that is one of the top priorities for the business. But also there are conversions of a smaller scale that are called micro conversion. An example of that could be if someone subscribes to your newsletter. Now getting a subscriber does not mean that it will grow your business and grow your revenue right away. But there is a chance that the subscriber will eventually maybe buy your product or service. Or in other words, that subscription led your visitor one step closer to completing the main conversion, the macro conversion, which is, for example, purchase. In this video, I will talk about three types of conversions that can be configured or tracked in Google Analytics 4. The first one is predefined conversions. So as the title implies, if a certain event is sent to Google Analytics 4, it will be automatically considered as a conversion. Then another option is to mark that particular event as a conversion in the list of your conversions under the configuration tab. And I will show that later in this video. But sometimes you want to track a conversion only if a particular parameter of the event is meeting your criteria. For example, you don't want to track all page views as conversions, but maybe you want to track views only of certain pages and treat them as conversions. And that's where create event feature becomes useful. And later we mark those custom created events as conversions. I will show you all of these in this video. Let's start with the first one. In Google Analytics 4, these are the following events that are automatically considered as conversions. First open, and this applies only to mobile applications, then App Store subscription convert, also applies to mobile applications, App Store subscription renew, when someone renews their subscription, then in-app purchase, and as you can see, all of these four events apply to mobile applications, and then there is purchase. That applies to both websites and mobile apps. For example, here I have a newly created Google Analytics 4 demo property, and if I go to configure and then select conversions, you will see that the only conversion that I have right now is purchase. This is because right now I have created only web data stream, and the only predefined conversion for website is purchase. It is by default marked as conversion and I cannot unmark it. If you started sending some mobile app data, then you would see other four events right here as well. Obviously, if they apply to your use case. Now let's move to the next category of conversions in Google Analytics 4. And I mean those conversions that I can manually configure. And later in this video, I will show you where can you find the conversion data in your reports. So the next option, how can you configure conversions is just by marking certain events as conversion by clicking a toggle switch. Here I am in another Google Analytics demo property. And if I go to configure and then choose events, here I see the list of all events that have been tracked recently. So these are all events that are tracked, but if some of them are more important to me, I can just switch this toggle in the mark as conversion column. And from this moment, that event will be treated as conversion as well. Now, what you need to remember is that this toggle does not apply to historic data. So if you, let's say, have been tracking this information for the last three months and you only enable this checkbox right now, that historic data will be treated just as a regular event, not as a conversion. 
So let's take a look at one of those events that is generate lead. So this is one of the recommended events that Google Analytics suggests you to track. And this should be fired when someone becomes a lead. In other words, they might have subscribed to your newsletter. Maybe they have downloaded some ebook or something like that. In other words, you got their contact information so that you could further contact with them and maybe, you know, sell some services or products. So when you send this event and if you want to mark it as a conversion, all you need to do is just to click this toggle right here. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that if you start sending an event to Google Analytics 4, you will start seeing it in this part or some other parts of the interface only within the next 24 hours. For example, let's say that I have started a new event, which is sign up. And immediately I want to consider that event as a conversion. So as you already know, you won't find that event right here because I've just started setting that event. Therefore, your another option is to go to conversions section in the configure part right here. And then you can click new conversion event and then enter that exact event name that you're sending newly to Google Analytics 4. So in my case, that would be sign up and then click save. So now this event is marked as a conversion. Let's say that I have already implemented sign up tracking with Google Tag Manager. And here is the tag. So when a visitor signs up on the page, Google Tag Manager will send this event to my Google Analytics 4 property. So now I will click the preview button in my Google Tag Manager container. By the way, if you have no idea what Google Tag Manager is and you want to get started, I have an extensive tutorial and you will find the link to it below the video. So let's say that now I have signed up and then in Google Analytics 4, I should go to configure, debug view, and I would like to test and see if that event is visible right here. And as you can see, here's the event. And since I have marked that event as a conversion in the conversion section, it is now marked with this green icon. So it means that this is not just a regular event, but it is a conversion. Within the next 24 hours, you will also start seeing that sign up event in the events list right here. You will also be able to see that in reports. For example, if I go to reports, then acquisition and traffic acquisition here in the list of all traffic sources and in the conversions column, you will see that conversion right here. Obviously right now it reports zeros because I've selected sign up right here, but since not enough time has passed, that conversion still was not reported. Another place where you can see the conversions is the advertising section right here on the sidebar. And here, for example, you can click conversion paths, then click right here to select not all, for example, 10 conversions, but only maybe that new sign up, click apply. And then you can see, well, obviously right now you won't be able to see that, but you would have seen the most popular traffic sources and in what order do they appear before your visitor finally converts and signs up. Let me quickly switch to another Google Analytics 4 property so that I could just show you a sample report. And here I am in the official Google Analytics 4 demo account. So if let's say I would have selected sign up right here in this drop down, and then went to conversion paths, then I would see the most popular conversion paths right here. Well, let me just quickly select maybe let's see last 30 days, then add more rows to the page. And here you can see some situations where, for example, the visitor first landed and found this page with organic search, then that visitor revisited, and then eventually the conversion was attributed to the referral because maybe the website visitor clicked on your link on some other website. Then one more place where you can find conversion data is in the explorations section. So on the left sidebar, you should click on explore. Then you can click, for example, on freeform. And then let's say that we want to see pages where most of the conversions occur. So to do that, we could, first of all, remove the city and the columns sections. And then in the dimension section, we should add a new dimension, which is page path plus query string, for example, import, then we can add it right here to the rows section. And as a metric, we could add conversions. So in the search, let's enter conversions. And here it is. So this metric shows the count of conversions. And if I drag it right here, and then sort it. And now you can see the pages on which conversions have occurred. 
Obviously, just keep in mind that this is a general example. And since this property is my demo property, then obviously the data makes no sense. So don't worry about that. And now let's go back to the configuration and let's take a look at the third option of how can you configure conversions in GA4. Here I am in the configure and events section. And one of the events that you will see here is page view. This is the standard event that is tracked every time a website page is loaded and together with it, Google Analytics is loaded. So even though you can technically mark all page views as conversions by clicking this toggle switch right here, it doesn't make sense because not every page is as equally important. However, there are some pages that on your website might be very valuable to you. For example, if someone signs up on your website and then lands on a thank you page, so the visit of that thank you page could be a conversion. But the problem here is that if you click this, it will mark all page views as conversions. So how can you mark only specific page views as conversions? And one of the ways would be to use Google Tag Manager and send a specific event when a particular page is visited. But there's another option that does not require GTM or any changes in the code. You can do everything straight from the interface of Google Analytics 4. And that feature is called Create Event. It is available in Configure and Events. So click Create Event and then click Create. So now we are going to create a new rule. This feature is designed to automatically create events based on other incoming events. In other words, what we're going to do is that we are going to create a new event if a page view occurs, but that page view occurs only on particular URL, which is our thank you page. So first we have to come up with a name of our new event that Google Analytics 4 will automatically track. Since we are talking about thank you page, the event name could be something like thank you page view. If you want, you can use something else. So the question now is when should this event be automatically tracked by Google Analytics 4? Well, I have already said that and the condition is when the page view occurs on a thank you page or, or the confirmation page if you want to call it like that. So in this case, the event name is page view and we are not looking for any page views. We are looking for specific page views where page location contains and then some part of the URL that lets you clearly distinguish that this is not just a regular page view, but this is a thank you page visit. So it could be something like thank you if the URL of your thank you page contains this part. So when a visitor lands on this page and Google Analytics 4 tracks this page view, it would also automatically dispatch this event that will inherit all the settings from the page view. And that is because I have selected this checkbox right here. So it will copy all the parameters from the source event. And in this case, source event is page view. Now click create. So this will create an additional event, but this event is not a conversion. If you want to mark it as a conversion, you would then need to copy this new event name, then go to conversions, and register this new event as a conversion like that, and then click save. So if I now go to a page on my website that contains this thank you part, obviously right now there's no page like this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So if a page view is tracked and the URL contains this, now let's go and see what will happen in the debug view. So in GE4, go to configure, debug view, and here we should expect to see that event, which is thank you page view. If the event does not appear immediately, you should wait for a bit longer because it might take some time for Google Analytics 4 to refresh and to start tracking that additional event. And it still doesn't work. So let's check the conditions of our create event rule because maybe I did something and I already see the problem. Instead of contains, I chose equals. So I should use contains because by default it selects equals. So let's save it. Then I will try to refresh that thank you page. However, I always like to give maybe 15, maybe 30 seconds for Google Analytics 4 to refresh some things in the tracking code. So after that time passes, let's hit that thank you page of which URL is this one. And then let's go to the debug view to see what is happening. And here's that event, we got page view. And based on that page view, Google Analytics 4 also created this event, which is a thank you page view. And it is now marked as a conversion. Now to end this video, here are several more tips that you should 
keep in mind. So first of all, there is a limit of 30 unique conversion names that you can configure in a single Google Analytics 4 property. So don't mark every event like crazy and you don't mark them as conversions. Mark only the ones that really matter to your business. And another thing is that Google Analytics 4 counts a conversion every time it occurs, while Google Analytics 3, or also known as Universal Analytics, only tracks the same conversion once per session of that same user. Now, if this sounds confusing, don't worry, I will now explain it to you quickly. Let's say that a visitor lands on your website and a new session starts. During that very same session, the visitor downloaded three ebooks of yours. So that means that generate lead event was fired three times. Even though the ebooks were different, the forms were different, the event name was same. So how will Google Analytics 3 and 4, how will they calculate these conversions? GE3, or also known as Universal Analytics, will count only one conversion, which is also known as a goal, because the same event occurred three times, but in the same session for the same user. That is why only one goal completion will be counted. But Google Analytics 4 will count this as three conversions because Google Analytics 4 does not care about sessions in this context. One event means that conversion was completed once. And then this is also a conversion completion and then this one as well. So if you're trying to migrate from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4, don't try to compare the conversion numbers because they will be very much different. So these were the fundamentals that you should know about conversion tracking with Google Analytics 4. If you want to learn more about them, then take a look at the description of this video where I will post a link to my blog post. And that is how you can track conversions with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. I have discussed three options in total. The first one is toggling events and marking them as conversions. The other one is to create custom events with the interface of Google Analytics 4 and marking them as conversions. And then there are also predefined conversions, but there's not much that you can do about them. If you found this video useful, you hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.